So I want to do this video to give you an understanding of asset allocation. So when you're looking for, when you're sorry, when you're building a property portfolio, what assets are you looking for to help you achieve your goals? So if you haven't watched this video before, the video before about goal setting, that's probably the number one step that you need to take before when building a property portfolio. Understand your goal, understanding what you want to achieve. What's your end result? Is the end result a big commercial property that's going to produce six figures and you you know you can retire on that property is the end result a family home your dream home uh, is your end result that you want to have a certain amount of passive income and you want to rent for the rest of your life and you want a certain amount of passive income i don't know what your goal is but once you get crystal clear and specific on what you are wanting to achieve then you've got to understand okay we're going to put a plan out there and say what sort of type of assets do i need to achieve this goal so this is a great way to understand Okay, I've got a goal. I need to understand now what assets I need to get me there faster and quicker as more, so faster and quicker than the 99% of Australians that only have three investment properties. So, there's a few different types of assets I've got here on the board. I don't invest in a lot of these, or some of these I should say, but the ones that I do, I'll give you my opinion and I'll, and I'll give you the pros and cons with all of them. So, what houses? Houses are a great way to build wealth because it's land. Land is king, as we know. You know, the more land you have, the more valuable it can be, depending on where it is, if it's where it's situated. Now, the good thing with houses is you can add so much value to a house. You know, you can do a renovation inside, you can extend the property, you can do landscaping at the front or back, you can add another dwelling at the back if you purchase a big block and you can put it like a granny flat or a bungalow, you can put a garage at the back, you can put sheds, you can put a pool, you can put, you know, gazebos, you can put all sorts of things on a big, on a good size block and a well situated, uh, where the house is well situated, you can do so many things to the property. You can do a subdivision, you can knock down the house in the future and put it, you know, do a development. And that's something that we target for our clients. So it's a great way to get ahead and it's a great strategy to use. But like I said, land is king. So value, the value is in houses and it always has been. Hasn't been in apartments, hasn't been in townhouses, it's always been in houses. So the next thing we've got here is apartments or units, which I do not recommend because like I said, land is king. And there's only so much things you can do for a, you know, an apartment or a unit. You can't start knocking out walls. You can't start, depending on where a property is and you know, your body corpse and etc. You can't start knocking out walls. You can't do any landscape. You can't add another granny, in the, granny flat in the backyard. You got, you know, you might even not have a backyard if it's an apartment. You know, you can't do many things. You can only do internal things, kitchen, bathroom, a little floor upgrade or curtains, etc. So you're very limited to your, your, you know, what you can do to the property. And not just that, the growth rate is much more slower than what it is for a house. So this is something that we do not purchase, but I just want to give you the pros and cons. Yes, it can be affordable. You can get in the market much quicker and easier, depending on where you're purchasing, because we're purchasing property that are houses, you know, that are affordable, and you know, and then they're going to put more money, more value in your pocket than what apartments would. Especially if you're purchasing some of these apartments in, you know, in your high-rise areas in your capital cities. You know, you just just another dwelling of all the other thousands that are out there. Where you got land, the scarcity. You know, not building that land. And depending where you purchase that house, if it's in a, already an established area, you can't just go and knock down a farm and put more houses. So that land gets more scarce and scarce because and that's what makes inflation grow and those properties get more scarce and you see property prices grow. Apartments, there's no scarcity. You know, there's an ultimate supply. So another th the third thing we look at, or what I like to look at is blocks of units. Great investment. Great investment that will accelerate your property portfolio. Something that you're purchasing, you know, a duplex, triplex, quadplex, you know, a six pack of units, eight pack of units. This is something that can, you know, speed up your process of helping you pay down debt. So you're understanding, okay, what assets do I need? Do I need properties that are gonna be high growth areas for equity? And you're gonna need properties that are, you know, high returns, like, you know, your blocks of units so they can produce a large amount of cash flow to help pay down debt. So when you're paying down debt, you know, you're, you're increasing, your LVR is dropping, but the income's coming in, your equity is growing. So these are great assets to just diversify and pay down your debt. You need different types of assets all in your property portfolio. You can't just get all houses, because you'll get stuck. 
you know, houses don't produce large income. Now, over time, as you purchase a house and then it grows in value, of course, the income will grow as well, but it's not like a block of units. Or next thing I kind of like to touch on is commercial. You know, this is a large, you know, it might not have your capital growth as a block, um, commercial property, but you've got significant amount of turnover coming on, coming through rental income. All your outgoings are paid by the tenant. So all your rates and your water and your, is paid by the tenant. All you got is insurance and that's all you have. All the outgoings are on the tenant. So it's a great way to get ahead quicker. Saying that, there can be some risk, a lot of risk with commercial. And this is where you gotta do your due diligence of commercial property, understanding where you're purchasing and what industry is going to rent that property. Because you don't wanna purchase it and investment property that's a commercial property and those sort of industries are dropping you know like manufacturing maybe even retail down the track so these are the things you gotta you know keep your eye out because you know as life and how things are moving at the moment things are changing in the world so you're gonna understand with commercial what sort of commercial we're getting we're getting like a healthcare center uh, there's gonna be you know like a doctor or a medical center something like you know um like a dentist etc is it going to be uh, a daycare center so where, you know, they, that's something that they need and it's growing and it's a great investment. So it's understanding certain, certain top commercial properties. A lot of risk with commercial properties because commercial properties don't work like investment, pro um, residential properties. How it works is the value of the property, say you've got a tenant in that commercial property. Now, let's say that property is worth $100,000. Now, let's say, sorry, no, let's say you're sorry, you're making $100,000 of rental income from that commercial property. Now, let's say that tenant from the commercial property leaves and you got a new tenant, but you couldn't get the, the rental yield of $100,000 per year, or say rental income, I should say, of $100,000 a year, it's actually dropped down to $70,000 a year. Now, when that happens, your actual value of the property drops 30%, because your rental income dropped 30%. So commercial property is very risky. There's a lot of things behind it. It doesn't work quite as a residential property. So you've got to understand, a great, great strategy to get ahead, but there's a lot of risk. Number five, rooming house. So you've got your DHS houses, you've got your NDIS houses, you've got rooming houses, just for your, you know, your, your public. Great way to get it, you know, have large income. Now, this is something where they get a house, they put en suites and bathrooms and kitchens in a certain bed, in a, in, a, in, a, in a bedroom, and they might turn that house into a four, five, six bedroom house. And every single bedroom has their own en suite and has its own kitchen, has its own living and dining area. It's like a little mini apartment block. So it's a great way to, you know, if you purchase something like a house, you can eventually maybe turn it into a convert into a residential house, uh, housing. So that's some sort of residential house, rooming housing. So it's a great strategy to use because you've got a large amount of income. Some of these rooms can get rented from 200 to 350 a week, depending on the, you know, facility and how, what sort of uh, renovations or, you know, so what sort of dwelling type it is inside, if it's very luxury or if it's very poor and, and cheap, it might be on a lower end, but it's a great way because you've got a property, you've done something like this and it can produce a significant amount of cash flow. So it's a great strategy. Another thing you got, last one, is your townhouses, which I don't like because of body corp fees and like I said, land is king, you can't add too much value to the property. You can't do many things, you can't do extensions, you can't do, you can't do many things. So you're stuck, it's stuck like a pretty much an apartment or unit block. Now it's a great way, I guess, affordable if you want to get into the market and use it to use it close to the CBDs. Not saying they don't grow in value. Not saying you know they're not a great investment, but I'm just saying, you know, your your townhouse and your apartments and units are very limited to what you can do. And you got when you go start you know, factoring in body corp fees and etc. and they go up over time, you know, that takes a lot of cash flow. I know some people that are paying four, five thousand dollars a year in body court fees. And you know, body court fees don't really pay for anything on the property. You still gotta get insurances. And once you start factoring all your, all your expenses, those properties aren't even putting much money in your pocket. Might be going well with capital growth to the extent. But like I said, as an investor, you wanna have the best of both worlds. You want capital growth and you want you want income, you want cash flow. So that's how you wanna run your property portfolio. It's like a business. You want both, you want cash flow and equity. So Hopefully you got something from this. So you gotta understand when you've got your goal set, what sort of assets do I need to achieve to get me to my end goal? Now you can't just have all of one. 
So you can't just have, go invest, investing in heavily in unit blocks because you'll get stuck because you won't have maybe the capital growth. You can't just go investing in the houses because houses aren't going to help you pay down debt. Now, if you're, you can't just go investing in commercial because commercial is a lot of high risk as well. So you got to understand how many assets do I need from each to help me get to my end goal? Because I need to pay down debt. I want to help you know use that equity to go purchase the family home or go purchase goods or whatever it may be. You know, I want the cash flow coming in, but that's my goal. I want to achieve a certain amount of cash flow. So what assets do I need? So for my strategy that I like to implement as well, I don't like to sell down my portfolio, depending on your goal, depending on what you're trying to achieve. So if you can avoid selling down the property portfolio and keep the property portfolio and use it to buy the dream home by leveraging off it, by using the equity or using the income to help pay it down, you know, and still have a nest egg of properties working for you, it's a great way to get ahead and leave something behind as well for your family. So there's a lot of different types of strategies. Buy, buy, then sell down some of the portfolio. Uh, buy and hold, of course, buy, renovation, buy, develop. And that's something that we target with our clients. So like I've touched on before. So hopefully you get something from this, which I will, there's all different types of asset classes out there. But we like to target our houses, our blocks of units, commercial rooming houses. We don't look for townhouses. We don't look for apartments or units. We look for something that you know you can add value to. Something that you can do multiple things with. Something that's gonna put a large amount of cash flow and equity in your pockets. So hopefully you got something on this.